Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to continue our discussion about Service Builder, taking a look at some of the features and functionalities of it. So let's go ahead and get started. We're taking a look at Service Builder's caching. Again, a lot of what we're about to discuss are more so for our information. So with Service Builder, there is caching that is built in, right? There are three levels of caching. We have the entity, the finder, and finally the hibernate level. EH cache is the default uh, cache provider for all three of these. We have within the hibernate caching, a level one and a level two. Each one has its own designated use. So within hibernate's L2 cache, it is disabled by default since it is redundant. So we don't really need to worry too much about it. Now service builder and OSGI, right? A lot of this is taken care of for us. There are some things that we are able to configure. So starting from LifeRay 7.2, the dependency injection that's being used is taken care of by OSGI's declarative services. If you wanna use the legacy spring, you can declare that within the service.xml. You just need to define the dependency injector using either DS or Spring. So let's go ahead and bring everything together from what we talked about previously and see how it connects with one another. So we start off with our service.xml file. Within the service.xml, we define the specific entity that we're trying to create, all of the attributes of that entity, and how we may want to be able to get that entity within the finders. Once we've defined everything within the service.xml, we run Service Builder. Service Builder will generate all of the code that's needed in order for us to have a model layer built out. So we don't really need to build much of anything. We just take that service.xml, define the entity, run Service Builder. So very simple, very straightforward. So how does this all kind of work? So over on the UI side, we'll have the end user interact with our UI through their browser. The UI itself is handled using typically a portlet component or the UI layer. Uh, if we were gonna keep it generic, we'll call it the UI layer. The UI layer will then communicate to the service layer and through Service Builder, we have the APIs revealed. So the UI layer or the portlet component will then make service calls to the API and through Service Builder, we'll go from there. Service Builder has the API built out. It has the implementations built out. If we only have local services, then that's okay, right? We'll go straight to the local service, go through the persistence layer, and then finally, whatever is going on will happen, either persisting things to the database or maybe retrieving things or something in between. If we have remote services, right, the UI layer will be making API calls to the remote service the remote service again acts as a facade layer, calling the local service and doing permission checking along the way, right? And then everything else remains constant. So let's talk about using Service Builder. So we've already hammered these ideas. Let's go ahead and reiterate them. So we start off by defining what our model entity or database object is going to be in service.xml. From there, we'll run Service Builder, and Service Builder generates all of the code that we need. We'll have an implementation class. If we want to do some customization, that's where we can do so. The implementation class is specified by a local service impul, if we're looking at the local services, and then service impul, if we're looking at the remote services. Once we make the modifications, we rerun Service Builder, so that way Service Builder picks up all of the changes that we've made within our implementation class, and then we can iterate through and modify the implementation if need be. So when do we rerun Service Builder? We've talked about rerunning it, but what are our situations that call for it? So there's really only two. The first one is whenever we make a change within service.xml, we're going to be rerunning Service Builder. The second one is if we make any changes within that implementation class, the service impul or local service impul, depending on which one we're working with. Anytime we make a change within those implementation classes, we'll always rerun Service Builder. So keep those two things in mind. So we've talked briefly about the implementation class. Let's talk a little bit more about it. So whenever we're 
running our CRUD operations, whether create, update, or delete, Lifeway best practice tells us that we should follow this pattern. So the entity name is defined within service.xml. So in our example, we'll have something like assignment service impulse. When we want to add, we want to follow this method signature. Same with update and delete. All right, so one example here is with the journal article. So this is the code that comes from LifeRay itself. So following uh, the method signature that we saw previously, we have a lot of different things here, right? These are all of the fields, all of the attributes of the entity. So going back one slide, we're always gonna wanna follow this pattern, user ID, group ID, all of the entity fields, service context, right? Update is similar and then delete has its own method signature. So take note of that. Feel free to look at our source code for some examples as well. Okay, let's go ahead and highlight some key concepts, some big ideas that we talked about throughout this video and the previous one. So Service Builder is a code generation tool that takes an XML configuration file as an input and generates a complete service layer as an output, that service.xml file. There are two kinds of services available. We have local and remote. Service implementation classes are the only classes meant to be modified manually. Those are the local service impulse and the service impulse. Service wrappers allow you to override service builder generated services from within an external module. Again, we talked about that very briefly. We'll see examples of that later on. So that wraps it up for this video and I'll see you in the next video.